Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm happy because our live storytelling show with Toop and Kate Corkery in Surrey in the UK is only two weeks away. I love live shows where we get to meet you all for real. Woohoo! Live storytelling, here we come. I'm also pleased because we have another Toop trickster story for you this week. The fish and the crane. It's from an ancient Indian collection of animal fables. This story has been told for at least 2,200 years. That is a long time. Before we hear the story, can you have a little think about any other tales which Toop has told while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? I'll give you a couple of stories to get you started. Tianjie and the Yellow Dress Remember that one? And Stick Woman. That's a big favourite. Are you ready? Off you go. And you might notice we're trying out some new adverts. So please bear with us as we give this a go and see how it works. Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know... We depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just Click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash super great kids stories. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder which of Toop's stories you remembered. Did you remember how the birds got their colours? Or how the whale got its sad song? Or how snakes got their poison? Or coyote and baby turtle? Or Tiddlink the Thirsty Frog. Ah, so many good stories. I wonder how many of those you remembered. Are you ready for today's tale? Let's give a warm welcome to Toop. Greetings each and every one of you to Super Great Kid Stories. I would like to share with you another story. A story about a crane, which is a bird, and a crab. One day flying out of the sky, there comes a crane. The crane has long legs and a long beak. And the crane alighted, landed next to the river. And there the crane stood. The crane looked at its reflection in the water day after day. Day after day the crane stood there. Underneath the beak of the crane was a tuft of white feathers that made the crane seem like an old, wise bird. As the days passed, the fish, they would swim by and swim away because, you know, cranes love to eat fish. The crane did not dive into the water and fill its beak of fish. No, it just stood there day after day. The fish, they became concerned. 
They said, Brother Crane, Brother Crane, he does not dive into the water. He's a lover of fish. That we cannot deny. But if he does not dive into the water and eat his fill of fish, he will die. But they could not come and speak to him. No, because they are fish. <laughs> so they said, what shall we do? There, sat upon a rock, was a crab. A large red crab. So they elected the crab to go and speak to Brother Crane. And here he comes. Crawling sideways over to where Brother Crane stood, Brother Crab looked up and said, Brother Crane, Brother Crane, why do you not dive into the water and eat your fill of fish? You will die. You are a lover of fish. You must eat. But the crane looked down at Brother Crab, saying, Brother Crab, you do not understand. I have flown from far away to this river. It's peaceful, and I cannot eat my fill of fish because, well, I've got to know you all so well. And I know that there is a ship not far from here which will come, and it will snare you all in its large net and take you away. And this saddens me. How can I eat fish knowing that those of you which I have become accustomed to know will be taken away. No, I cannot eat my fill of fish, and this is why I stand here. When the crab heard the news of what Brother Crane had said, the crab went back to tell the fish. All the fishes swam this way and that way, saying, The men will come with their nets. They will cast their nets into the water and draw their fill of fish. What shall we do? Go back and speak to Brother Crane. He is wise. He will know what to do. Here comes Brother Crab again. And with his eyes, he looks up at Brother Crane, saying, Brother Crane, you are wise. Is there any way you can help us? Ah, says the crane, yes, well, that's the thing. You see, on my way here, flying, I pass quite a few rivers. And, you know, I can take you maybe one by one or two by two, and I can drop you in another river where you can swim and play very happily. And I'm willing to do this. And with that, the crab went back and told all the fishes that swam. Brother Crane says that he can take one and two to a new river before the ship comes with their nets. All the fishes, they came swimming and flipping and flapping around the feet of Brother Crane singing, I'm going first, who's going first, I'm going first, who's going first, I'm going... Oh, the crane said, don't push, don't shove, take it easy. He bent down and picked up a fish into its beak, opened its wings and took to the sky, flying higher, 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 passing a river, passing a river, passing a river. Then on the side of a mountain ledge, the bird alighted landed, threw up its neck and its beak into the air and the fish went head first down into the throat of the crane which ate its fill of fish, opened its wings and flew back once again to the river. The fish was still swimming. I'm going first. Who's going first? I'm going first. Who's going first? Oh, said the crane, don't push, don't shove. Take it easy. He bent down, he picked up one fish, maybe he picked up another one. And with those two fish opening his wings, he took to the sky again, flying over the land, past the river, past the river past another river till he came to the mountain ledge, flipped up its head with its beak to the sky. One fish went down, another fish went down. Ah, then he had his fill of fish. And as before, opening its wings, 
it flew back to the river. And the crane, he did this many times. And all the time while the crane was eating, the crane thought, oh, what a clever bird am I. I know I'm getting old and my feathers no longer hold their oil. And so I don't even have to dive into the water anymore. No, <laughs> I just have to bend down and the fish, they are even singing, who's going first? I just take my pick, fly away and eat. What a clever bird am I. But with the passing of time, you know, the crab was sat there on that rock and wondered. So many fish have already gone and what will happen to me, thought the crab. I will be left here in this river. What will happen to me? So the crab scuttled over to where the crane stood. Looking up at the crane, the crab said, Brother Crane, Brother Crane, you have taken so many fish before. Will you leave me here in the river? So when the men come with their boats and their nets, I will be cast away as well. Take me, take me this time. The crane looked down and thought, Hmm, I've never tasted crab meat before. It could be nice. I think I'll try it. OK, said Brother Crane, no problem. Why don't you hop onto my beak? And there the crane bent down and the crab with his large pincer grabbed the beak of the crane and the crane opened its wings and took to the sky. Pass the river. Pass the river, pass the river, pass another river. Oh, the crab asked the crane, Brother Crane, why do you pass so many rivers when you can lay me down in any one of those? And the crane thought, I might as well tell him, now that his life is at an end. Look down below, said the crane. Do you see that mountain ledge? Do you see the bones of the fish which I have eaten? I <laughs> laughed the crane. I am a lover of fish. Do you think I'm going to take you to a river? <laughs> Soon I will land upon that rock face and I will throw back my head and you shall become a lovely, delicious meal. Oh no, said the crab. And the crab climbed up upon the head of Brother Crane. Brother Crane, his eyes looked around to see where Brother Crab was. Now Brother Crab was on the neck of Brother Crane. Oh no, said Brother Crab, as his pinches, they pinched the neck of Brother Crane. And Brother Crane, he opened his beak. Quah! And before you know it, Brother Crab fell out of the sky, falling, 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 falling towards the earth. Splish, splash, splosh, into the water. And he was back into his river again. When he arrived, the fish swimming around was singing, I'm going first, who's going first? I'm... Hey, what, 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 what happened? Brother Crab, where is our saviour, the crane? Ah, oh, said the crab, he was not our saviour. He is a crane and he is a lover of fish. There is no river he was taking you or I. No, he is a trickster of tricksters. Listen, this is our river and this is where we should play and swim and forevermore be happy. And so it is. From that day to this day, the fish and the crab, they swim in that particular river. 
And as far as I know, the crane never returned to that river again. Oh, thank you for listening and thank you, Toop. Well, not all tricksters get what they want, do they? What do you think the moral of that story was? The little lesson in it? Maybe it was something about not believing everything you're told. If those fish had questioned that crane a little bit more, they might not have been in such a rush to climb into his mouth. Did you like the musical instrument which Toot was playing to make the sound of the crab crawling and the crane flying? It's called an mbira or a thumb piano and it comes from the Shona people in Zimbabwe. Now to dig deep into my bag of happies and say hello and thank you to some of you owlets who've been supporting our podcast. Hoo, 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 hoo. And hello to superfan Nikon from Perth in Australia, who is six and seven in June. Nikon has been listening to Super Great Kids stories for two years. Such loyalty, Nikon. Thank you. I wonder if you can tell a story to someone at home. And a big happy hoot to story fan Angus from Isha in the UK, who is also six and about to turn seven. And hello to new owlet Lily, who is six, from Chelsea in Michigan in the US. Her favourite story is The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. Woo! Well done, Lily, for listening to that scary story. Now that you're an owlet, you'll be able to listen to more super great scary stories on our podcast for subscribers. And hello to new owlet and Apple subscriber Otto, who is four and lives in Jersey City in the US. Otto listens to a super great kids story almost every night. His favourite is The Lonely Giant. I agree, Otto. That's a cracker. And hello to new Patreon subscriber and owlet Mia from Michigan in the US. Mia is very nearly six. Hoo-hoo-hoo! What a lovely age, Mia. Her favourite story so far is Strawberries in Winter. That's a little bit scary too. And as for the stepmother in that story, poof, what a nasty piece. And hello to Dean and Drew, who are Apple subscribers from the US, who kindly wrote us a generous review on Apple Podcasts. And hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo to Apple subscriber and Owlets, Hemingway, who is six, and his brother, Matisse, who is two, from Portland in Oregon. One of Hemingway's favourite stories is The Little Singing Frog. Hemingway likes the fact that the prince believes the frog girl and all of her story. Yes, I like that too, Hemingway. It would be easy for a prince to pay no attention to such a fantastical tale like that. But he does believe her and kapow! Happy ending. And thanks to Kofi donor Seth from Seattle in Washington, who loves all the stories. One of his favourites is How the Elephant Got Its Trunk. Yes, Seth. That is a phantasmagorical story. I particularly like the way the rude elephant says, Disgusting! And lots of you have given us kind reviews recently. Thank you. We love reading them. It puts a little skip in our day. Thanks to Wolvesy Clo from the US and Claire, who is nine, and her sister Molly, who is almost seven, also in the US. And to Nate Dog Tyler from the UK. And thanks to all you talented artists who've sent us pictures of your favourite stories to post on our Facebook page. We had lovely pictures of the recent story from India of The Tiger's Tail from sisters Ira, who is six, and Arika, who is ten. They live in Seattle in the US. I love both your paintings. A very creative use of colour. Thanks very much for sending them to us so quickly. And 
we had a clever picture of the ghost of the bloody finger from Leo, who is eight and lives in Sydney in Australia. It's just great the way you've drawn the blood dripping onto the terrified man who is shaking in his bed. Thank you, Leo. I'm glad you're enjoying the Super Great Kids Stories colouring book too. And thanks to six-year-old Mia from Edmonton in Alberta, Canada, for her wonderful drawing of the Mama Dragger story. You've made Mama Dragger the Ogress look so scary with her huge dark eyes and angry mouth and outstretched skinny arms. Thank you, Mia. And Autumn, who is six, from Froome in Somerset in the UK has sent a wonderful picture of the story from Haiti, Tianjie and the yellow dress. I really like the way you've put all the girls' friends wearing yellow and green and purple clothes. Such a good story about being kind to our friends, isn't it? Thank you. And Frida, who is five, also from Froome in the UK, has sent us a colourful picture of the Haitian story, The Magic Orange Tree. Just lovely, Frida. Thank you. Another of my favourites. And a super great cheer for Avery, who is five and lives in Virginia in the US, for drawing such a marvellous picture of the story Why Crocodiles Sleep With Their Mouths Open. Your crocodile with a mouth full of sharp teeth certainly looks as if he's enjoying that big bar of chocolate. And I really like the way you've drawn his teacher, Miss Beaky, hiding by the school door. Thank you. That's it for this week. Thank you all for sharing your pictures. More next week. If you'd like to see these drawings, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do come and see our show if you're anywhere near Surrey. It's not very far from London. Half an hour's train journey from Waterloo. In the meantime, keep telling your stories and singing your songs. And for those of you observing Ramadan, we wish you Ramadan Mubarak. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs>